morning welcome to our fifth sunday of virtual worship so glad you can join us now and i welcome those who may join us later it's hard to believe that it's been five sundays already we've done this and glad we have the opportunity that at least we can meet and worship this way I wanted to read a scripture verses to you this morning from Genesis, the very beginning of chapter 1. And this is what it reads. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a vault between the water to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under vault from the water from above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation plants and plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed and according to their kinds and god saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the third day and god said let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and moves moves about it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening And there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kind, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish and the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, when over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth, and to all the birds in the sky, and to all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. 
There was a surgeon, an uh, architect, and a politician that were arguing one time. Who had the oldest profession? Well, the surgeon said, and the scriptures say, that God took a rib from Adam, so that was the first surgery, so he had the oldest profession. Well, the architect chimed in and said, well, in the beginning, the world was formless and void, and so they needed an architect, and so that is the oldest profession. And the politician stood back a little bit and smiled and finally said, in the beginning, there was chaos, and who do you think created the chaos? Chaos is what is described in the very beginning of Genesis. The earth, the creation, all that was just chaos. There was no order, basically, until God brought order. And some of us think, well, that's kind of what's going on right now. The world is in chaos. It seems like we've lost some order in what we're doing and what we're used to. Normalcy has been changed to any moment um, we might have to adjust to new restrictions or new guidelines in the COVID-19 and so forth. And so it's a different time that we live in. And one of the things that we had to adjust was this Sunday is technically uh, in the United Methodist Church the festival of God's creation. It's celebrating the earth. It's celebrating the glory and majesty of God's creation. It also coordinates with this week will be Earth Day, which is on Wednesday. It will be the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Now, with the missions team, we, we talked about doing some neat things this week and bringing some awareness. And one of the big things we're going to do is plant some trees. And we, we got some permission and we wanted to plant some trees maybe around the playground. Eventually they'll grow up and bring more shade to that area. So because the playground's used pretty much all summer long, sometimes with people in the church and sometimes by people that don't go to church here. But it gets used. Well, like I said, all those plans kind of got put on hold like a lot of everything else that we've planned in life. Not just in church, but in life. And so we feel like it's a bit of chaos. But when we read this story in Genesis, we, we learn some things about our relationship to creation and what God does with chaos. He brings order to it. And so I wanted to take some time to talk about creation and what, the, what this story tells us. Now, I wanted to start off with just saying a few words about the Genesis story. There's lots of debates, lots of opinions. Is it literal or is it just a figurative story? I've heard people say, well, in a scientific world, the earth literally is billions of years old. I've also heard people say, well, the earth is only something like 6,000 years old because Genesis is the actual literal creation of the world. And so everything starts from there. It doesn't matter what any other science says. Whatever your opinion on literal or figurative, it does not really matter. The point is, the story of Genesis gives us an incredible witness to what God intends and what our relationship with God in creation. And so one of the, there's two things I should say that this narrative tells us about our relationship and God's relationship with creation. The first thing it says over and over again is that creation is good. Good is, is such a, a relative term. We, we might think things are good and other things may not be good, just based upon our opinion. One example of that is rain. Now, when it comes to springtime and it's, we've got through winter and it typically rains a lot in the spring, we kind of get irritated. Since here it goes, raining again, because it tends to rain a lot. 
And so we want to get out. We want to do our things. And so we're frustrated and we say, I wish it would stop raining. And so we say that oftentimes in the spring because it rains a lot. But when we get into July, maybe August, we start complaining because it's not raining enough. You think it's dry, the grass looks bad, our flowers are not growing. If we're a farmer or we're worried about our crops, we says we need some rain. So goodness in our way of looking at things can be a little bit emotional depending on our mood and what our desires are for that moment. But when the scriptures talk of God, goodness is consistent. So when it says that God created and it was good, it is good. All the things that we see around us. You know, some of us, we love to look at the, the sunrise or the sunsets and we see the beauty there. Some, we look at the stars and the moon and the planets and we think, wow, that's amazing. It's maj maj majestic to look at those things. Others of us have visited the Grand Canyon or gone to some mountains in the States or around the world and we say, that's incredible. How did God create such beauty? Some of us, we, we wanna just sit on the beach and we hear the waves and the breeze from the ocean or we're sitting by a creek and the water is just gently flowing by and it relaxes us. One of my great joys and especially in the warmer days is to either sit outside or right in front of a window and have the breeze come in. I find it so relaxing. Uh, Betty gets irritated with me when it gets fall time because it might be 40 or 50 degrees outside and I have the window open and I'm curled up in blankets and it's freezing inside, but I just love to feel the breeze. I don't want to close the window. And everyone else in the house is freezing and frustrated with their husband or their father. But goodness in the creation is amazing. If we take some time and we look around us, we're in awe of what God created. It really is good and wonderful and amazing. But there's something else that this, the, this narrative tells us that is even more incredible than God creating all these things and making them good, making them beautiful, making them wonderful. It's that we, you and I, humanity, have been given the privilege, the honor, the gift to be stewards of this world, to be responsible. Now, stewardship is, is basically... Someone else owns it, and they hire or they have someone take care of what they own. God owns everything, and we're stewards. Now, a lot of times when we talk about stewardship, we talk about it in the end of the year, and we talk about our finances and having good, good stewardship with our finances, our assets, our resources, and so forth. But stewardship is so much more than that, especially when we're talking about creation. Because everything was created by God. And we think about that, we think about our very bodies. That we are to be stewards of our bodies. Sometimes we uh, have to evaluate how good we're doing at that. It's being a good steward means, yes, we should probably exercise because it's good for us. And I do not do that very often, so I'm guilty of that. We should eat better. More nutrition. Hmm. Yes, maybe I'm not such a good steward of that as well. You see what I'm saying is that we have stewardship of more than just our finances and resources. Our bodies, our health, exercise, nutrition. We think about our minds. What is our, our spiritual life in our, in our, in our minds, our emotional, phys our emotional, psychological, spiritual? You see, we, stewardship involves so much more than just finances and creating, like I said, our bodies, our minds, our resources. It includes our responsibility in what we do around with creation, especially when we think about a festival of God's creation and Earth Day coming up. How are we doing as stewardships, stewards, I should say, of this world? 
Are we doing our part? Are we taking care of what we can? That's a question we have to ask ourselves. And that was kind of the point of what we were doing with the mission team and, and trying to bring some awareness of what we could do in our part. How can we be better stewards of what God has given us? That is what we've call, been called to do, to be great and wonderful stewards of this creation before us. And so we are reminded this day of God's wonderful creation, the beauty around us, the sunshine when, <laughs> when it sunshines, the rain when we want it and desire it, sometimes when we don't, but it's all required, it's all necessary. Even for you that don't like the cold, it's part of the natural order of things. The beauty of the world. And it takes all of us, all of the world, doing our little part. If we are a believer in Jesus, if we are a follower, we have a little bit more accountability for this. Because we have the truth of Scripture. We have the truth that God says, I have created. I have created it good. And so if we know this, and we know that we have been given stewardship of not only our resources, our bodies, our minds, our relationships, whatever it may be, if we have stewardship of this world, we have a responsibility. And so how are we doing today? We think about it ourselves. When I get done today with this time, when I take some time and think, what am I doing to be a good steward of creation? What can I do better? And what do I need to start? That is what we're here for, to be stewards of this great and wonderful world that God has given us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this wonderful world that you have blessed us with. It's amazing. It's majestic. Sometimes it's beyond our grasp to understand how wonderful it is. But you have given us a privilege, an honor, to be stewards of your creation. Help us to be better. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless and have a wonderful day.